so we are going to deal with a new chapter in biology and that is called principles of inheritance and variation all right and this chapter can also be called as classical genetics so in this chapter we're going to learn about the basics of genetics and who laid the basics of this genetics right so we'll move on to the chapter so first to know what this chapter is exactly about you need to know about two important things one is inheritance and the other is variation so first we'll see what is inheritance so like inheritance how do you call inheritance is as i'll give you a very simple example see for example when somebody tells you wow you have such a good smile and you have inherited this way of smiling from your father so that is called inheritance to be even more simpler inheritance the passage of character or the gene from one generation to the another generation and even more simpler when you take elephant any animal the animal yields the miniature of that animal right an elephant yields to a baby kuddy elephant right but how like can you even imagine can an elephant yield a dinosaur that is not possible right why it's all because of gene gene play a very important role so that is inheritance inheritance is the passing of one character from one generation to the another generation or the transfer of gene from one generation to the other generation right with mendelism now what is mendelism you would have learned in your uh, smaller classes right mendel's monohybrid cross mendel's dihybrid cross yes that is the basics of this mendelism and ab above all this we are going to learn even more updated versions of other genetical experiments done by various research scholars so first who is called as the father of classical genetics you have to say it is grigor john mendel grigor john mendel right so in the 19th century you know i'll tell you a very small story mendel was born in a family of farmers in a farmer family right so now what happened in his backyard he had a lot of pea plants so mendel wanted to do some experiment something with these pea plants and he came up with this mendelism this monohybrid cross dihybrid cross and now eventually we are learning about so mendel right so what did he do okay let me choose this pea plant for my experiments and now there is a question why did mendel choose this pea plant or yes pea plant for his experiment so you have to answer that first it was easily available because it was present in his backyard the second thing it was it had a very shorter life span okay the it like the total lifespan of the plant is just one year and then this plant had a lot of contrasting characters what do i mean by contrast tall and the opposite of it is short contrasting is nothing but the character which are opposite in nature right so he had all these seven pairs of contrasting characters and now we will see what are these seven pairs of contrasting characters so first is stem height right so stem height is that the stem of the plant first first character was it was a taller stem and the second thing was it was a shorter stem see this was a taller stem and the other was a shorter stem next is the flower color the color of the flower so one he chose it was white color flowers and the other he chose was violet color flowers right and then the flower position it could be axial position and a terminal position when you say a flower is in terminal position which means that the flower is present at the end the topmost part of the flower, uh, plant and when when do you call it as a terminal position is the, like that is what is terminal position and when do you call it as an axial position is that the flower imagine this is a plant right if it is terminal position the flower will be on the topmost part of the plant if it is an axial part of the plant means this is how the flowers are being placed not on the topmost part but almost on the throughout the surface of the plant so that's the difference between terminal position and the axial position next is pod shape so what is this pod the the outer layer which covers the seed right so you have to like 
remove the flower uh, pod to uh, take the seeds out so that is the pod so pod is inflated and constricted inflated meaning bulgy pods little bulgy air filled pods and constricted pods are what the pods which are much constricted which are very much thin next is the pod color he chose what were the pod colors green color pod and a yellow color pod the same way seed color green color seeds and yellow color seeds next is the seed shape how the seed shape was it was round so when it is a normal round it is a round color seed and wrinkled is that the seed which does not have much of the starch content right so that is what so you say it as a wrinkle skins right with all the wrinkle marks so that's how the wrinkle seeds look like so now in today's class we saw about all this right and now next first if you want to take a screenshot you can screenshot it next we'll continue with the rest of the chapter Hello friends. So next we will continue with Mendel's experiments. All right. So in these experiments, you have what separate monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross, law of dominance, law of segregation, what not all. You have everything. But here I am to explain it very clearly. So we will see to it. So first we will talk about monohybrid cross or the inheritance of one single gene so in this cross there is inheritance of only one gene right so Mendel took a tall plant so before that we learn what is dominant homozygous dominant heterozygous dominant and what is a recessive character a dominant character is something which is superior for example there is a tall plant and there is a dwarf plant which is a superior character Tall plant is the superior character, so that is the dominant character. Next, when you talk about the dwarf plant, it is very short, so it is obviously the recessive character. So that's the difference between a dominant character and a recessive character. All right. So next, what happened? Mendel took. Okay, next is homozygous. Yeah, that I forgot. Homozygous dominant and heterozygous dominant. Homozygous dominant is something where, see, homozygous, homo, which means similar pair of gene, capital T and capital T, it is similar, that is homozygous dominant. What is homozygous recessive? The similar set of gene, but it is dwarf, it is not superior, so which is small t and small t, alright, so that is homozygous dominant and homozygous Recessive. Now important thing is heterozygous dominant which means that there will be different types of gene will come together but the plant will be a dominant plant. For example capital T which corresponds to the superiority. Small t which is corresponding to the inferiority but it is heterozygous which means different genes but it is coding for tall genes so that is called as the heterozygous dominant so you would have learned in your smaller classes if, if, if you didn't understand in those smaller classes now this basics would be difficult for you all but just like replay the video this part alone you keep replaying it so that you will have a by heart uh, knowledge on what is this homozygous heterozygous and all okay only when you know this clearly we can move further so now next we will okay so that's all now concept is over now we we'll want to monohybrid cross so monohybrid cross is what the inheritance of one gene so what happens Mendel took a tall plant and a dwarf plant okay and he fused these two plants and now in the f1 generation which means Filial generation, F stands for the filial generation. In first generation, what happened? See, there's a pair of these alleles, right? So, alleles are nothing but the characters which is imposed on a pair of genes called there's an allele. Earlier, this gene was called as factor. So, now first he took a tall plant and a dwarf plant and he fused them. And what did he get? 
a heterozygous dominant plant which means this capital T and small t where everything was a tall plant but they were not homozygous dominant they were all heterozygous dominant plant clear so now what happened in f2 what did he get how did he get this f2 because this f1 heterozygous dominant plant he did a selfing selfing meaning this tall plant is being fused with another tall plant okay which means capital t small t is fused with capital t small t so that's the concept so when he did this selfing what did he get so it's, it's like a very small matrix which you do in max right and this is called as the punnet checkerboard or the punnet square so punnet was friend of Grigor John and that's how this name got he was the one to invent this checkerboard to check what sort of gene is being involved right so first what happened is that this is selfing now horizontally you write the first parent and vertically meaning vertically you write the first parent and horizontally you write, you write the other parent okay now see it's very simple like numbers T and T is T T. Capital T and small t will be capital T small t. Capital T and small t will be capital T small t. Small t small t will be one small t and the other small t. Very simple, right? Just see it, combine and write. And now genotype and phenotype. So in my previous video, I would have told you all what is the difference between the genotype and a phenotype. Genotype is a genetic makeup. Phenotype is the physical makeup. So genotype is something which you can never see. But phenotype you can easily see. If it is a tall plant, you can easily differentiate it when you when you compare it with a dwarf plant, right? So that is phenotype. Genotype is where capital T and small t. This is heterozygous dominant. Though there is a recessive gene involved, all the plants will be what? All the plants will be taller plants. So that is genotype which you can never easily observe, right? So that's the genotype and phenotype. So genotype is where exactly now search for the similar pairs capital T and capital T now there is nothing else which is similar to this so put one and now these two are similar this one and this one and now what you put two and this is a single thing small t small t and again so one is to two is to one and now phenotype is where you they are combining the homozygous dominant as well as the heterozygous dominant you club it together and write and the same you negotiate the small t and small t right genotype is which you can never see phenotype is something which you can easily observe so that's the difference between genotype and phenotype and next we'll move on to test cross and back cross and this is very interesting topic so test cross is where you know who the child is and you never know who the parent is right so this is a fantastic experiment where offspring is there but you don't know who the parent is so that's the difference between a test cross and a mono hybrid cross mono hybrid cross is simply of using the parent get an offspring again you do a selfing to the offspring get an f2 generated uh, plants but in case of test cross you have to find who the parent is for example see now this capital w stands for violet plants and this small w stands for violet plants meaning plants with violet flowers and plants with white flowers right now what happened that you have to find who the parent is now already a puna checkerboard has been drawn for you but you have to find who the parent is now how will you find that see small w is here and now there's a capital w so what should come here for this punnet square has to be capital W and small w. Obviously, it has to be capital W, right? So, that's how it is. So, here there has to be capital W and capital W, which means there has to be a homozygous dominant plant, which is a violet plant to obtain a heterozygous dominant violet plant, right? So, this is a very simple example of this test cross next we move on to back cross so what is back cross is back which means the individuals of spring the baby plants you are backing it which means that you are crossing this baby plant with the parent with one of its parent 
plant right so in case of this mono hybrid cross you can take this capital T capital T which means a tall plant and a dwarf plant and you get the F1 generation now this you again cross it with any one of the parent and you see what you get so that's how they are crossing it see capital T small t is being crossed with one of its superior parent it, you can cross it with a recessive that is inferior plant also so now everything what you get is 100% tall right so when you cross it with the inferior plant what you get it has to be 50% 50% you will get so that's a simple logic matrix so we spoke about monohybrid cross then we spoke about test cross back cross now we will see the two laws of inheritance one is law of dominance and the other of law of segregation law of segregation i'm not going to tell it now because in future like in the further chapter there is a big experiment on this law of segregation so that time i'll explain you but law of dominant is based on this mono hybrid cross so what is law draw this law of dominance is that there is a there is two parents but in the f1 generation what happens is that there is always a dominant character which is being exhibited to be even more simpler there is a tall plant there is a dwarf plant now what happens in the f1 generation there is always a tall plant with the gene of a tall plant and a dwarf plant hybrids okay that is why it is called is that mono hybrid cross all right so hope it is clear for you any doubt you can comment in the comment section below and i'm here to help you all if you didn't subscribe our channel please do subscribe that also and never forget to press the bell icon because daily i'll be uploading these educational videos only then it'll come as a notification in your mobile phones right so yes so next we'll continue before we continue if you want you can take a screenshot of it